English Racing Automobiles, or ERA as it was better known, built production racing cars in the 1930s. They raced in the Voiturette class that complemented Grand Prix racing of the time, and they were very successful. On Autophiles, we continue the story of ERA. The Donington Grand Prix in 1937 saw ERAs taking part against the fearsome cars from Germany, Auto Union and Mercedes-Benz. With their smaller engines, none of the British cars were able to compete against the Germans, and indeed none were running at the finish. It was a demonstration of how much better the German cars were. Crystal Palace in London, ERA driver Prince Biro was able to hold off all the Maseratis. The young Siamese Biro was crowned king of the palace. He walks across the track with his cousin, Chula. 1937 was to be the last really successful year for ERA in international Voiturette racing. The financial stress of running cars in races abroad and in Britain was telling on the pocket of Humphrey Cook. There was a difference of opinion as to whether they should build another Voiturette car or a Grand Prix car instead, which was Raymond May's and Peter Burthon's dream. Beera takes the final Laurels of the Year at Crystal Palace, presented by Lord Howe. In 1938, ERA received a big surprise. The winner of the race at Donington Park was the little 750cc Works Austin. By now, Lord Austin's twin overhead camshaft miniature Grand Prix cars were as quick as anything around, and Beera had to be satisfied with second place. and the exciting sideways driving of Peter Whitehead, seen here without the helmet in the ERA, fighting it out with a number of other cars. Whitehead was an underrated driver, even though he won at Le Mans after the war. Donington Park and Beera showing his skills as a sculptor. The Pat Fairfield Memorial, unveiled by Lord Howe. South African Fairfield had helped put ERA on the map. Rare colour film from Donington Park in 1938. Beera racing against the Austins and using all his skills to secure victory. Brooklands and the streamlined car in the middle of the pack is the multi-union driven by Chris Stanland, a modified P3 Alfa Romeo. On the outer circuit, the Altas, the MGs, the Bugattis and the ERAs fighting it out. Another new British star coming to the fore in 1938 was Johnny Wakefield at the wheel of an ERA, winning the 200 mile race. Raymond Mays, meanwhile, was still the king of Charles-Lee Walsh, a rare insight into the master of the British hill with R4D, his ERA that established the record of 37.37 .37 seconds, which stood for many years. The kink prior to the S's is often the secret of a good climb. Through the S's, you can lose time and charge the bank.
This was a polished professional at his very best, coming down the hill to the applause of the crowd and their congratulations. Early in 1939, Mays left ERA. He had tested the new E-Type, but the car he took with him was R4D. Donington Park, 1939. The Maserati opposition was not on form on this day, and Biro was at the wheel of his third ERA, Hanuman. This was a Zola supercharged car bought from the factory. None of the Zola blown ERAs were quick off the line, except for Raymond Mays taking the lead. But soon, Mays was passed by Bira. He chased him down, caught him, passed, and went on to take the win. This was the last significant race held at Donington in the pre-war years. Notice the great change in the circuit from today's circuit. Bira passes slower traffic, drifting the ERA through the curves and up to the line to take the checkered flag. Congratulations over, it was on to the continent where, at Reims, Bira crashed the car. Present at Albi in France the following week was the E-Type ERA in the hands of Arthur Dobson, the opposition coming from Johnny Wakefield's new 4CL Maserati. Bira was driving the old ERA Romulus, recovering from his Reims accident but suffering from a high temperature. Cars line up at the start of what was to be one of the best performances by the E-Type ERA. Dobson started in pole position and went straight into the lead. The best that Bira could do with the old car was third place. Mays was a retirement and so too was the E-Type in what was to be the last year of the ERA factory under the ownership of Humphrey Cook. Winner of the race, Johnny Wakefield, with the brave Bira finishing third. This was the final year of the Voituret formula, and the 1.5-litre W165 Mercedes-Benz had made its debut. One of the top drivers was Wakefield, who lost his life during the Second World War. And here is Mays competing at the Prescott Hill Climb with Ken Richardson, later to be the chief mechanic at BRM, pushing the car at the start. His opposition on this occasion was from Bugatti. Jean-Pierre Vermeule at the wheel of Bugatti's last Grand Prix car. Mays was triumphant, taking on the best that France could offer. Then came the Second World War. and the first British post-war meeting at Shelsley Walsh. There was no circuit racing with the demise of Brooklands and Crystal Palace, so hill climbs were the only motorsport available. Peter Walker nearly loses his ERA at the S's. Nevertheless, his time was fast enough to make Raymond Mays really have to push hard in the ERA R4D. Mays was heavily involved in the BRM project. Here, he is at his best at Shelsley Walsh on a wet track. George Abacassus in the Alta, but it was a remarkable performance by Mays showing his mastery of the hill and the car as he takes fastest time of the day in the first post-war meeting. The first major race meeting to be held in Britain after the war was at Silverstone in 1948. In ERAs, Cuth Harrison, Bob Gerrard and Raymond Mays. Bira was back at the wheel of a Maserati. If the ERAs were no longer winning cars for the one and a half litre Grand Prix formula, their reliability at least ensured them places. Bob Ansell rolled his car, fortunately without injury, while Mays and Bira retired. Luigi 
Villarese won in the 4 CLT Maserati. It was a fine drive by Bob Gerrard, first of the ERA's home, in third place. This was Gerrard at his best, probably the leading British driver in the early post-war years. Another early Silverstone race with George Nixon's ERA. The car being run on stands, warming the gearbox and the axle, the right way to start an ERA. Plugs changed and Nixon can be seen in the white cap standing by the car. David Hampshire was another strong contender in the early post-war years. And this is Billy Cotton, an ex-band leader, talking to mechanic Wilkie Wilkinson about to drive the ex-Seaman ERA, as autographs are signed by Beera. George Abacassus with the Alta 1.5-litre Grand Prix car, and Raymond Mays about to drive the Thin Wall Ferrari, bought by Tony Vandervelle for BRM when he was associated with the project. Louis Chiron with a hat knitted by his wife and Louis Rosier, the champion of France at the time. The key to the bespectacled Gerard's success was not just the preparation of the car, but the team that he ran in conjunction with his wife, Joan. They were an immensely successful partnership throughout a long career, whatever Bob drove. The fall of the flag, Gerard is pumping up the pressure in the fuel tank as the Maseratis get away. The club corner at Silverstone had this loop in the middle of it. The Nixon car was soon in trouble, and while the Maseratis were to dominate at the front of the field, Gerard's ERA was showing its usual reliability and speed. Faster than many of the Italian cars, it just lacked the outright ability to win the race. Not so its driver, who never had the opportunity of driving a modern Grand Prix car. Bira retired, and so did Reg Parnell. The car that lasted longest was Baron de Graffenried's 4 CLT Maserati. Despite May's leaving, the ERA factory was still in existence, now moved to Dunstable. The company was purchased from Humphrey Cook by Leslie Johnson. Pre-war, they had constructed one E-Type, and post-war, they were to construct another. But the E-Type ERA flattered but to deceive. Here, Gerard receives congratulations from his wife and the team after another fine race at Silverstone. Peter Walker could be proud of the performance of the E-Type ERA, the original pre-war Grand Prix car, in the next race at Silverstone. The E-Type had already passed through the hands of Parnell and then into the Walker Whitehead team. Here at Silverstone, Peter Walker was to prove that the car did have potential, if only it could be made to run reliably. cars were still very successful on the hills. Here is Raymond Mays at Rest and Be Thankful in Scotland. Mays went on to win the first British hill climb championship with R4D. When he sold it, the car passed into the hands of other drivers, such as Britain's Ron Flockhart and Ken Wharton. The ERAs were being challenged by other cars, such as Dennis Poor with the 3.8-litre Alfa Romeo. There was another challenge, too, to Mays and ERA domination, coming from small cars like the Cooper 1100. The driver to watch was Ken Wharton. Surprisingly, Wharton shared his driving between a Cooper and R11B, Humphrey. Wharton is seen here at Chelsley Walsh. He was later to include R4D among his cars. Here, he rides the bank in his efforts to get to the top faster than Mays. 
Ken Wharton was a great all-round driver on both hills and circuits. So too was Dennis Poor, another champion, seen here talking to Mays and Wharton. The G-Type ERA was the creation of David Hodgkin for company owner Leslie Johnson for Sterling Moss to drive. Fitted with a Bristol engine, it had been intended that ERA would build their own engine. Dry sumped, the Bristol engine was mounted low down in the ERA chassis. Although unsuccessful as a Formula 2 car in Moss's hands, it went on with modification to become the successful Bristol sports car, the 450s that won their class at Le Mans. But the G-Type was the last ERA, and fittingly, here is Sterling Moss at the wheel of the car at Silverstone in the 1952 British Grand Prix. He was to retire from the race. ERAs are still regularly seen racing as an important part of the strong, historic racing scene in Great Britain. Here is a selection of the exciting cars the ex-Whitehead car in the hands of Pink Floyd drummer Nick Mason. Lord Howe's R8C with the independent front suspension with Bruce Spollen at the wheel. memorial at Shelsley to Raymond Mays, the father of British hill climbing, ERA and BRM. Patrick Lindsay in R5B Remus and John Venables Llewellyn in R4A were among the starters at Silverstone in the 50th anniversary ERA race in 1984. Martin Morris in Humphrey. Bruce Spollen in the X Howe R8C and Romulus the most successful ERA. Historic racing expert Willie Green on driving ERAs, especially those with independent suspension. Yes, basically it didn't work, but I can fully understand why they did it. Um, this comes back to the old thing about bumps on circuits. Um, some of the circuits then were so bumpy that if you didn't have independent front suspension, it tended to deflect the car and throw it offline. Um, nowadays we're driving on billiard tables and you don't need suspension. So you really don't need geometry again. It's like, just like a big go-kart. And the beam axle cars handle a great deal better than any of the cars with independent front suspension. The D-Type ERA, of which there is only one, R4D, has independent front suspension. How does this compare with the other ERAs? Well, it had this enormous supercharger sitting right between your knees, which is an extremely dangerous position to put a supercharger. And front suspension that didn't work. And it was quite without doubt, and Neil Corner agrees with me, the most unpleasant racing car that either of us have ever driven. Why then did Raymond Mays love it so much? I don't know, because there again, you see, this is in a different era when the circuits were, you know, much bumpier, and it probably did work like that. Um, I don't know. Perhaps he had some better development on it than when I actually drove the car, but I just didn't enjoy it. Now we look back on the 50th anniversary race in which many of the 16 surviving ERAs competed. Patrick Lindsay racing into the lead in Remus and Martin Morris following him closely with Sir John Venables Llewellyn third in R4A. The old Beckett's corner with Morris coming through on the inside. Through Woodcut corner. Behind Romulus, the ex Seaman car and the former Whitehead car. Remus was perhaps the least successful of all of Prince Beera's ERAs. Purchased new in 1936, the White Mouse team kept the car for only a year. There was smoke coming out the back of it at Silverstone on this day. Yet today, it's one of the most successful ERAs in historic racing. Now fitted with a two-litre engine, Patrick Lindsay and his sons have driven this car with considerable verve. Behind is Martin Morris with Humphrey, once the Peterbell hill climb car. This car was now running with a two-litre block, which became available to ERA owners. There are few 1500cc cars still running. 
Acknowledging the pit signal, but already aware that he had a problem, Lindsay was leading the race easily. Notice the understeer as the car tries to go straight on, and then the oversteer as the tail flicks out under hard acceleration. The technique of driving an ERA is very specialised. Sir John Venables Llewellyn with R4A, one of the earlier works cars of the first series. This car has the sloping radiator, showing one of the modifications that were made during its lifetime. Many ERAs were modified after the war in an effort to remain competitive in what was then a Grand Prix formula. Lindsay clipping the curb and feeding on the power of the two-litre engine, which at that time was producing around about 300 brake horsepower. Behind, Martin Morris in a car that had been modified for sprinting. And he takes the lead round the outside of Cops Corner. Dropping out of the race with mechanical problems is Lindsay with Remus. Behind Venables Llewellyn in R4A is R8C, the ex-Lord Howe car, closely followed by Brian Classic in R2A, the second ERA ever built. Bruce Spollen's car had the front suspension sawn off and the C-type suspension welded onto the front. Martin Morris, now firmly in the lead, goes on his winning way. Willie Green trying to close the gap, and behind him the original Romulus, now owned by Princess Narisa Chakrabonse. The other ex Bira machine, Hanuman, which gave him his last win in an ERA post war, chased by Jost Wiltboys in R1A, the very first ERA. Martin Morris came towards the chequered flag, in second place Sir John Venables Llewellyn in R4A, and behind him Bruce Spollen, Brian Classic and Willie Green. presentation and Martin Morris looks impressed as he takes the laurels at the end of a long hard race. Finally a look at R4D, perhaps the fastest ERA ever built, seen here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in the hands of John Harper. His car is now regularly competing in historic races. Of all the cars that emerged from Bourne or from the Dunstable works of ERA, only one no longer exists. English racing automobiles, ERAs, represent an important part in the history of British motor racing.